Hey everyone, this is the first episode of the Didn't I Tell You podcast, the suggestions podcast for moms, because one thing I know about being a mama is that we really don't like taking your advice. (laughs) I'm your new sister friend or new favorite auntie, Shar. Today's episode is about loving mama because today is Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day, mamas. Sit back and enjoy the show. Today is all about you. Didn't I, didn't I, didn't I, didn't I, didn't I, didn't I, didn't I tell you podcast? The Didn't I Tell You podcast. Cast. Didn't I tell you podcast? Didn't, didn't podcast? Didn't I tell you podcast? The Didn't I Tell You podcast. Hey everyone and welcome to the brand spanking new Then I Tell You podcast. I'm your host, Shar. And first, allow me to say thank you to my son for that dope intro. I absolutely love it. Let me tell y'all, I am so excited about this show. It is a long, long time coming. Women have been asking me about my experiences raising four amazing humans that I call my sons. I am a mother of four young adult black males. I have been an unwed mom. I have been a married mom. I have been a divorced co-parenting mom. And now I'm a single mom now that my son's father is deceased. And so when it comes to motherhood, when it comes to parenting, God has really blessed me to learn some things, some tried and true principles that just work. And I've also had an opportunity to learn some new strategies and techniques that have helped me along the way to ensure that I reared four successful young men. So this podcast is all about me having a a space to share those nuggets of wisdom so that people can just grab and go. (laughs) This podcast is not about telling you the right way or the wrong way to rear your children. It's just a space where I'm going to share some suggestions. I'm going to allow some other mothers of a certain age to share some suggestions. And mamas, you all can just come on in and glean as you will. I always like to say, chew up the meat and spit out the bones. Take the pieces that work for you and leave the things that don't. Now, before we start today, let's do a little bit of housekeeping so you know what to expect from the Didn't I Tell You podcast. This is a weekly podcast. You can expect to get new episodes every Tuesday morning so you can listen on your way to work and the kids together on your lunch break whenever you feel like it because it's going to be an audio only show for now video may come in the future but for now you can listen on any of your favorite podcasting apps it's also going to be a segmented podcast so I've got some really cool segments for you all. The teacher and me wanted to make sure that I shared some educational things so that we're all constantly learning. So we're going to have a by the book segment where I'm going to tell you what the research says. I'm going to tell you uh, what what the really, really smart people say about parenting and motherhood and whatever our topics are. And then we're going to have a Shar says segment where I'm going to give you my perspective and just know I am not really PC. So sometimes uh, just, just get yourself ready. Okay. And remember always chew up the meat and spit out the bones. And then we're going to have a, what would you do uh, segment? And if you are a part of the didn't I tell you podcast Facebook group, then you'll have an opportunity every week to answer the, what would you do? question and I will share those responses here on the podcast. So if you're not already a member of our Facebook group, go on over to Facebook and join us. And if you're not 
already following us on Instagram, do that too at D I T Y podcast. And then we're going to have our from the mouth of babes segment where you're going to hear my sons. <laughs> you're going to hear my son's voices in this show and going to get some of their perspectives on whatever the topic is we're discussing in that day. And finally, going to wrap it all up with a mommy moment, just a bit of inspiration to help moms keep moving throughout the week. This very first segment of By the Book is going to come from Britannica Online. I thought it would be really interesting to learn where this tradition of celebrating Mothers for Mother's Day began. Please note, there were festivals that honored mothers in ancient times, but I want to share how we here in the United States began celebrating Mother's Day as a national holiday. And it began with a woman named Anna Jarvis of Philadelphia, whose mother had organized women's groups to promote friendship and health. On May 12, 1907, she held a memorial service at her late mother's church in Grafton, West Virginia. Within five years, virtually every state was observing the day. And in 1914, U.S. President Woodrow Wilson made it a national holiday. Although Jarvis had promoted the wearing of a white carnation as a tribute to one's mother, the custom developed of wearing a red or pink carnation to represent a living mother or a white carnation for a mother who was deceased. Over time, the day was expanded to include others, such as grandmothers and aunts who played mothering roles. What had originally been primarily a day of honor became associated with the sending of cards and the giving of gifts. However, and in protest against its commercialization, Jarvis spent the last years of her life trying to abolish the holiday she had brought into being. Remember, Shar says whatever Shar's gonna say, you simply chew up the meat and spit out the bones. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone, (laughs) for wanting to hear what it is that Char has to say. And today is all about giving your mother her flowers right now. You know, in our current society, we are really on some some stuff when it comes to our mamas y'all and i said it before and i'll say it again we have learned about trauma and toxicity and narcissism and all of these uh uh ideas that are really becoming more like buzzwords um for sound bites and i want to remind us on this mother's day that the reason we are all here and able to complain about our mamas <laughs> is that your mama chose to let you live. She chose to allow you to uh, come into this world. And no, she may not have done everything right. She may not have made the best decisions according to you. She may not have done all the things you wanted her to do or wish she would uh, do or she didn't teach you the things that you feel like you should have been taught. But you know what? She allowed you to live. She allowed you to come into this world and breathe and be. And for some of us, it was harder than others. And I know many of you will say, well, you know, I didn't ask to come into this world, but you're here. You're here. And you're doing amazing things in the world. And you've had your own children. 
and you are having an opportunity to, to do great things for your kids and you, you have an opportunity to raise your own children and you have an opportunity to build businesses and, you know, make movies and sing songs and whatever it is that you do. And you are able to do that because your mother allowed you to stay put and come into this world. So on today, for this Mother's Day, I want to encourage us to love on our mothers while they're here. No, they weren't perfect. I definitely was not perfect. It takes my oldest son to tell you all (laughs) that I was not perfect. However, that does not negate the honor that should be given to mothers because of what they do. It's hard being a mama. It is hard, hard, hard being a mama. I wouldn't tell anybody that this is a, is an easy thing to do. And when I think about all of the things that my mom had to go through to raise three children by herself, you know, during the times that she raised us, I learned to put some respect on George Ann's name. And so today... I encourage you to say your mother's name, to call your mother, whether she is uh, not here with us anymore on this side of heaven, or if she is, call out her name, put some honor and some respect, revere who she is because she is your mama. There is a poem I call your mama that I included in the Diddy or didn't I tell you podcast Facebook group. If you're not already a member, make sure that you find us on Facebook and join, um, join our community. But there's this poem where she talks about your mama and it doesn't matter, you know, <laughs> whether your mama is a step mama, whether your mama is a baby mama, you know, it doesn't matter what you put on the front. A mama is still mama and she deserves to be respected and honored. For those of you who may be having a difficult time to find it in your soul to respect your mom, maybe because she just, she just didn't do a good job (laughs) when it comes to you, or you feel like she didn't do a good job, or maybe um, there were some things that took place in your life that were so hurtful and traumatizing that you're just finding it really, really, really difficult to find any kind of way to respect your mother. I want to share with you when I got to the point where I could release my mother from my anger and get to a place of loving and honoring and cherishing her. I was about 28 or 29 years old, somewhere in there. I had, I believe I was 28 because I was pregnant actually with my fourth son. And at the time I was married and we were having some financial issues and my vehicle got repossessed. That'll be a story for another day, y'all. And my mother was taking me to school. I was a school teacher at the time and my car had been repossessed. So my mom was driving me to work. And the night before I um, was spending some time just talking to the Lord and I heard the spirit of the Lord in my knowing place is what I call it, say that I needed to release my mother from my anger And that I needed to tell her that. And y'all, I cried. I was like, I'm not sick. Like, what do you mean? (laughs) But the very next day in her vehicle while she's taking me to work, I was like, mom, I got something to say. And while I'm saying it to her, I'm crying. And I'm saying, you know, I release you from my anger. And that opened up a conversation between me and my mom and it brought her to a place of tears. And she said, you know, I, I've known that you've been angry with me for years. I just didn't know how to make it better. And I'm not saying that things became perfect at that moment between my mother and I, but what it did was open up the door for me to get some understanding and to begin to have dialogue with her about things that had been on my heart for so many 
years. And one thing that I came to terms with is that before my mother was my mother, she was just a woman. She was just a woman living her life uh, with hopes and dreams and aspirations. And, and she became my mother, but that does not take away from who she was as a woman and what she wanted as a woman and the issues that we have as women. And so sometimes the decisions we make for the woman in us are always the best decisions for the mother in us. And that oftentimes will negatively impact our kids. And I had to realize that I too am a woman who who was then a mother. And I had to look at myself and realize that I didn't always make the best decisions as a mother, that I wasn't perfect, and that my children would grow up someday and say that some of the things that I did weren't the best and that I traumatized them. When I started to see my mother as another woman, as well as being my mom, it allowed me to have some empathy for her. And it it allowed me to extend grace to her. And it opened up the door to forgiveness and healing. And so I can sit here today, right? Almost 20 years later and say, I love my mother. I respect my mother. I honor my mother. I put respect on her name and I give her her flowers now. I hope that me sharing just a little bit of my story and how I was able to get to a place of uh, putting some respect to my mama's name and honors, honoring and cherishing her uh, now. I hope this helps you on your journey to giving your mother her flowers today. The What Would You Do segment is all about allowing you, my amazing listeners, to be involved with the show's topic. This week's What Would You Do question is, if you only have $5, what would you do for your mom for Mother's Day? I post this question in the Didn't I Tell You podcast Facebook group, and some of the responses were, uh, Tammy Polk said she buy real flowers and place them on her mother's grave site. Valerie Champion says she would do the same. Tamika Simmons says she write a letter explaining how appreciative she is for all she's done and either five carnations, if they are a dollar, or one or two roses in her favorite color. T. Lewis says she's given her some lottery scratch-offs. Kelly Jo Song said a beautiful card with a heartfelt letter and however many flowers you can get with the rest. And Jamar Lowe says, if I only had $5 on Mother's Day, I give it to her and tell her to put it in the collection plate so the seed can manifest into whatever she wants. What a beautiful sentiment. Thank you all for participating in this week's What Would You Do question. If you would like to participate, make sure you join the Didn't I Tell You podcast Facebook group and look for the What Would You Do question of the week. And maybe you'll hear your answer on the next episode. I wanted to create a space where me and my sons could share our perspectives. And so every week, you all are going to get an opportunity to hear what they have to say straight from their own mouths. And I call this segment From the Mouths of Babes. And this week, my sons wanted to wish all of you a very happy Mother's Day in their own way. I would just like to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. And thank you for the things you do for your children. Happy Mother's Day. You know, to all the mothers out there worldwide, thank you for what you do. Also, thank you for giving birth to daughters because it's time to hand them over. (laughs) Thank you. And happy Mother's Day. 
Happy Mother's Day. Yeah, yeah, today's your day. Uh huh, to all the mothers. Yeah, happy Mother's Day. Uh, I'm thankful for my mom. I'm thankful for my mom's mom. I'm thankful for my dad's mom. Uh, I'm thankful to all y'all. Y'all do a lot. And y'all help us, y'all help us move forward. So thank you, thank you. One more time, thank you. Man, shout out to all my moms, man. It's y'all day, man. I hope y'all shout out y'all day, man. Shout out to mamas. Man, y'all deserve it. Providing for your kids, hard working. Man, you can shout out to the single mamas. Shout out to the ones that's hard working, you feel me? Happy Mother's Day to you. Happy Mother's Day to the grandmothers. Happy Mother's Day to the great grandmothers. Happy Mother's Day to everybody. That's a mother. Love y'all. My sons are a mess. <laughs> Just get ready for this roller coaster ride we're going on with my four babes that are actually four young men currently. So we've made it to the end of our very first episode of Didn't I Tell You Podcast. And I want to leave you with our mommy moment. And it's a quote from Sharon James that says, Successful mothers are not the ones that never struggle. They are the ones that never give up despite the struggles. Mama, keep on keeping on and don't give up. Stay in the fight for your babies. Please make sure you all Follow me on Instagram at Diddy Podcast, that's D-I-T-Y Podcast, and join the Facebook group. It's Didn't I Tell You Podcast on Facebook. And I would love to hear your feedback about the show. Tell me what you liked, loved, and would like to see in the future. You can email me at Didn't I Tell You Podcast at gmail.com. Take care until next week. Bye.